Well, good morning, everyone. It is a rainy, rainy day, but it is March the 2nd, 2023, which is hard to believe. And my name is Kaylee Davis. And Kaylee I know this- Kaylee Senior Davis. Today, yes. Uh, I know this is the Sherry Show, but we are having a Senior Takeover. Again, my name is Kaylee, and Miss Sherry couldn't be here today, so I brought the next best thing, my dad. Well, I don't know the next best thing, but you know, I'm younger than she is, so she's well, a lot true. older. Yeah. This is true, but you guys, I know a lot of you know my dad's face. He's been on here a lot of times with Miss Sherry, and uh, when I was younger, I used to help host the show with Miss Sherry, and so she wasn't able to be here today, and she gave us a call and was like, would you mind to come on the show? And I was like, sure. So we're sort of winging it today. I don't know what she's doing. She said she had a meeting to go to, but I think she might be doing something else. Maybe I don't she's know. taking a much needed day off. You day of rest. In the, in the yeah. rain? I would, with some coffee. Yeah, I Maybe would do she's that. At home watching movies or something. I don't Maybe know. I would. I don't know. But we miss Miss Sherry. We thank you so much for letting us take over the show today. And um, we're kind of having just a stroll back down memory lane today uh, with some of the things and kind of get to know our story a little bit, I guess, and share some music with you today. And Dad's got some fun facts as he always does, and he's very snazzy. Well, I, I thought it's a special occasion, so I, I would, I've done it before, even on some, some of the remotes we used to do, but I, I, I have a tuxedo with all the accessories, and I thought, well, I want, I, my, my wife said, Kaylee's dressing in red and black, and I already had a green and, uh, ensemble picked out for March, of course, but when I saw that, I said, well, I got something to match up with it, so here we are. Yeah, looking a little <laughs> snazzy today, so well, what kind of things do you have for us, Dad? Well, being March the 2nd, uh, 2023, I, I like looking at people's birthdays. I know one in particular I wanted to announce because I always remember it, and uh, born on this date. Let's just do the born on this date okay. list of people that was born on this date. Uh, uh, John Bon Jovi, one uh, rock and roll singer. Rock and roll, yeah. yeah. He's 61 today. He's just a couple months older than me. Uh, he's got a lot more money than I do, of course. Daniel Craig, uh, <gasps> James Bond. Dun, 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 dun. I yeah. love James Bond. Some of my earliest memories, because my dad isn't really like watching movies, I but like James, James Bond, Bond movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a, he was a pretty cool uh, character. He's 55 today. Chris Martin, you told me he's a singer with a, with Coldplay, a rock yeah. group. He's 46. Lou Reed, you won't remember him. He was an old rock and roller from a group called Velvet Underground. He had a song out called Sweet Jane. Anyway, he was born on this day. He would, he would have been 81 today. He's going on. Bryce Dallas Howard, young actress. Yes, her dad is from uh, Andy Griffith's show. Ron Howard. <coughs> she's 42 today. Rebel Wilson. I think she's kin to she's the... an actress. Yeah, she's yeah. an actress. Uh, she's 43. <coughs> Desi Arnaz. Y'all remember the... I have a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, Desi Arnaz. <laughs> he would have been 106 today, born on this date, 1917. Wow. Uh, Luke Combs. Country. Uh, country singer, 33 years old today. Uh, he was born in 1990. Man, that makes me feel old. And I got a couple of people I want to recognize. One over in, Car uh, both of them was in Cartersville, one still is. Randy Jenkins, my old high school uh, buddy I grew up with. He's 61 today. And my Aunt Grace, who has gone on to be with the Lord, uh, my mother's sister, she would have been 81 today. So there's your born on this date, March the 2nd. I think it's a guy thing. There is one more I got to talk about, though. Oh, what's that? Oh, yes. Karen Carpenter. This is my dad's yep. favorite. She's my favorite singer of all time. She'd have, she would have been 73 years old today, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Karen Carpenter, 73. You're always full of all these, I call it useless information. That's what my wife calls it. <laughs> but it's useful when somebody needs it. So. No, there's all kinds of, do you know who produced this album and who made this this and who played the guitar? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm glad you know, Dad. Well, it's just something I, I like to do. <laughs> it keeps my mind busy because, you know, one of these days I might not have my mind. I know. So. Yeah, love on the people you have in your family while you can. Yep. You just never know. But speaking of some of those musical artists we just talked about, you were raised in a household that uh, was a little mixed. I like old rock and roll and, mm -hmm. of course, gospel. My <coughs> wife likes and gospel. And oldies music. And oldies music, yeah, yeah. the older rock and roll and pop music. And we oftentimes do music trivia at our house. I'll do, I'll turn on iHeartRadio or something and we'll listen to the song. We I'll won't say. look at the screen and I'll say, who did it? Who and did it? We'll yeah. uh, go through that. So it's a trivia thing for us. But uh, musical things, you were raised in a home with that kind of music as well as country. Your mom likes country music. Yes, she does. So you've got a little bit of both of those. And yeah. We also had gospel because we w went to church at the same place together as a family. And mm -hmm. so we uh, did hymns and 
the old uh, quartet stuff, trio stuff, and the southern gospel music, and so you grew up on that. Well, and I know a lot of you, too, have memories you can go back to, but um, every Friday morning, my aunts, there was, there was 12 children in my grandmother's family, and um, they would gather around and have breakfast on Friday mornings and pray, and then they would get around the piano and sing and do harmonies, and that's how I learned to hear those things. And a lot of us, we know those hymns, they get just sort of hidden in our hearts, and we're able to bring those out whenever we have joy or sadness or sorrow or any of that stuff. So a lot of those songs and the gospel music is ingrained in me and has a great um, history for me as well as many of you I know. So. Well, that's how I learned it too, <clears throat> sitting around listening to my mother's family just sing as a family unit and they had two boys and ten girls and so you, you hear all the parts mm -hmm. and it just keeps going in you, and you either get it or you don't or you like it or you don't. So Yeah, and like some it. of those hymn books had the shape notes in it and I didn't understand what those were but I always thought that was cool to look at. <laughs> That's true. So, you know, you growing up in a house with music is, was important to you. And of course, I laid in bed at night as a young teenager listening to stuff with my headphones. My dad had an old too. stereo and I had headphones and I would lay there until I went to sleep. And That's what to I do every night. I have my ear, now they have earbuds, Dad. We don't have headphones anymore. Oh, you don't have so headphones? You know. I mean, some people wear headphones, but you have earbuds. Well, I guess and the it's ear, Bluetooth now. I guess the earbuds don't make your <laughs> ears sweat like the... No, you know. no, no, but I do that. I fall asleep and listen in my ear and it's, that's, music is always going, so. But I always like listening to them that way because you get the full effect. You're, you drown out everything that's mm -hmm. on the outside and get to hear it all and it's, it's, I like to nitpick it. I always like looking at album covers. I started to bring some albums this morning. I brought some last time and I like looking at the album covers and reading all the footnotes. And who I do did that what. too, yeah. yeah, and producing and writing and all of that. So Now you growing up with music, you liked it a lot. So uh, we used to take you and the kids to Dollywood quite a bit mm -hmm. when y'all were younger. I'm the and, oldest of four. Yeah, Thank and so know. she's the oldest of four and she wanted to uh, she told me one day, she says, I want to work at this place one of these days. She was only like, what, 12 or 13 mm -hmm. years old. So the time came when she was uh, in high school 17. in Pickens County, and she went and tried out at an audition, and she got hired. It was funny because I took you down there, and they wanted you to sing some Patsy Klein stuff. So after we took a lunch break, went back, and well, I bought you a CD at uh, Walmart, I think mm -hmm. it was, and took it with you and you learned a couple of songs before we got back in there and you sang them and they hired you. So that's what they were Yeah, I got for. put in the country show and I, you know, everybody knows crazy. Everybody knows that song, at least the first few words of it, but that's all I knew. And um, so I just sat and listened to the CD over and over and over again. And sure enough, they asked me, do you know any Patsy Cline? And I was like, matter of fact, I do. <laughs> you know who wrote that song, Crazy? No. Willie Nelson wrote that song. There you go. For Patsy Cline. It was originally called Stupid, but he didn't like the way it sounds. Stupid. I'm stupid. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Okay. I never know you when he's back. joking. I no, never know. I'm not joking. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, he, he said that he gave it, he pitched it to Patsy Cline, and he, he actually still does that song when he's touring as oh, well. Oh, that's interesting. So, but anyway, so you get up to Dollywood. You, you're not even graduated high school yet. No. Um, for those of you maybe who come from Pickens County, uh, if you've been in Pickens County High School, um, I was 17 at the time, but I had Miss Herman for my math teacher, and she made sure I got through all of calculus very quickly um, so that I could graduate earlier than everybody else. And then I went down and moved in. Uh, my parents brought me up on like a Friday, and they left on a Sunday, and I started work on a Monday. And it was very scary, um, but that's what I knew I wanted to do, and my parents backed me up on that and um, had to take the day off to go graduate. Which was strange. Did, yeah. <laughs> but we tell you that because <clears throat> those of you who are parents of uh, younger kids right now, and you, they have a, a dream or a goal or a desire to do something, and they want to do it, but even before they get out of school, it can be done. Mm -hmm. You just have to work with the school system, and, and they will accelerate your work, or they'll work, let you work remotely or whatever. But that's, this is what this one here did, and we were proud of her, so we still are. But, um, yeah, Dollywood was um, a lot of fun, and you know, and today we we just kind of wanted to share a little bit about just again hopes and dreams, chasing those things, and um, you know all the fun that can come from that. And I'm I'm a product of these hills of North Georgia, and I love it here. This is always home. I still live in Tennessee in Pigeon Forge, um, and so I. But this this is home for me, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Yeah, we were talking about some uh, shows we used to do years ago, <coughs> and. Up to this day, still, I have people come up to me and say, we saw you and your daughter singing on TV. And I told them, I said, you know, that's 20 years ago, yeah. if not a little longer. <clears throat> she was probably 16 years old at the time. Of course, now you're, uh, <coughs> so, but anyway. I'm a mom of four, 
Yeah. Yeah, a mother of four. So yeah. your life has changed. You went. You used to do the Sherry Show. You helped co-host it a little mm -hmm. bit back in the day. So you were, gosh, I, I guess still a teenager. Oh, and or? I used to be so nervous because Miss Sherry would say, oh, just get on there and just do whatever. We're just going to talk to this person. And I was like, I, I don't, what am I asking? What am I doing? And now I can talk the paint off the wall. And I can thank Miss Sherry for some of that because I just true. learned how to just go. And you do like TV too. You like kind of doing that. You've been on some, mm -hmm. some TV stuff up in Pigeon Forge when they do radio things. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, I've done some things with Dolly and um, done promotional things through Dollywood. And so it's, I, I enjoy production. I like being on stage and I like, I love singing. I, I would rather be a background singer than anything. But I love production and behind the scenes and, and, and writing and what the lighting this. guys do. and Because you can do all of this, but you don't have anything without your crew. And so thank you guys back there in the back. There's, it's not just me and my dad. There are other people here, too, who make this happen. So That's true. I mean, we don't, we don't see them or nothing. They, they're back there playing video games and whatever they're doing. But, you know, <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're running the cameras, and we, we appreciate <laughs> that. But, you know, people saw you on the show here back then, and then you left, and a lot of folks do go up to Pigeon Forge and see the shows. And I had a lot of our friends that view the show that went to see you at Dollywood. Mm -hmm. Tell them about the shows that you were in from start to finish there. Okay. Um, yeah, even though we're kind of co-hosting today, I was supposed to be Miss Sherry's guest, so I'm sort of Dad's guest today. And I'm um, your guest. Yeah. Uh, so I started in Country Crossroads, and we did all the fun songs like, Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter. We, had, we did all that. of those fun songs. Um, uh, Ernest T. Ford. I had to play, learn how to play the juice harp, which I've never done before. Ernest T. Ford. Mm-hmm. Nice name. Anyway, lots of old country, um, and so we did a lot. Tennessee Ernie Ford. There you go. See, that's why you have your dad. Yeah. Um, but we did a lot of fun things, and, and we sang outside where the train is. If you've ever been to Dollywood, there's a little um, theater right there, the Valley Theater. And every day, I'd be right in the middle of crazy, and here'd come the train, just drown you out. But it was a lot of fun. Um, and y'all did a several shows a day there. Yeah, you did up to six shows a day, and uh, out in the heat with long sleeve western shirts on, and it was... It was rough, <laughs> but we also, um, I did another show called GAC, and that was, it was kind of like CMT. Um, Great American Country. Yeah, it was a, a station on TV that played country music, and but through that show, I got to sing for people like Linda Davis, and um, well, who's the guy, that, Jim Ed Brown? Jim Ed Brown. Yeah. Jen, Jeannie Seeley. Yeah, Jeannie Seeley. Jimmy Fortune. Mm-hmm. He remembers all this better than I do, uh, but just um, a lot of different, T. Graham Brown was probably one of my favorites, because that man can sing. Um, so y'all are doing, the, I, I saw some of those shows, y'all are actually doing the background vocals for these yes, artists. Yes, so the artists would come in every week um, and you, they'd give you the music like two days before and then you'd learn the background vocals and you'd, so part, you would sing your own segment of the show but then another segment was for a country artist and so you would do the background for that and it was, it was always something new and ever changing and, um, but I got to meet a lot of amazing country stars that were from the older generation. Um, that really knew how to sing and how to be professional. And so I learned a lot from that time. Um, but I also did the 50s show, which was, well, it went from the 50s all the way to the 70s. And it was so like much show. fun. Yeah, it's called Dreamland Drive-In. And um, it was a beautiful story about uh, how a man met the love of his life. And you kind of go through, in his mind, you go through their story together. And I got to be the Rizzo of the show, <laughs> which was a lot of fun. and. Um, and I remember I had, to, I had to kiss a guy every day on the stage, and I did not like that. Um, but it was just, you know, something different, and the dancing was really hard, yeah. and um, it was a great, great Lo show. Lots of costume changes, too, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I wondered how y'all pulled that off, but they give you a little break there, just yes. a short little well, break. Well, that's the biggest question I get um, when people come see a show is, how do you change so fast? How did you get into that? Sometimes you layer, but a lot of times, like, if you have to go from... Um, you know, a dress to a pants set or something like that. You always preset. It's called presetting things. And so, like, if you're going to have to get into a dress, you you set it to where it's sort of open and like in a circle, so you can just step in and go. Um, sometimes you have pants and you roll them up. I mean, there's just lots of tricks that you have. Um, sometimes you rip zippers out of things and put Velcro, so um, you can just kind of or put snaps so you can go. Um, but it's all about you know, in theater, you have 30 seconds. That's an eternity to change. An Not eternity. For me, it ain't. That's why when, when my husband's like, okay, we got to leave in, in 10 minutes. And I'm like, okay, that's plenty of time. <laughs> I have my hair and makeup done in 10 minutes. I'm ready to go. Um, and so, but that's, that's the rush of theater. And, and when it's live, you never know what's going to happen. A funny story one time, uh, the Christmas show I did was Christmas in the Smokies. And a lot of you probably know that show. I did the trio part where Mary and Joseph and the angel. 
and I'm standing there holding Joseph's hand and we're just singing about the Lord coming and I'm pregnant and all these things and I feel something underneath my like Mary outfit around my feet and I'm thinking what what is that and the next thing I know the guy playing Joseph is looking down and his eyes are huge and there has a squirrel has come onto the stage and gotten underneath my outfit but my it. my dress was so long it covered up my feet it couldn't get out and so I had to like lift my foot up while I'm singing and that thing just takes off and it jumps off the stage into the audience. That sounds like a it's windy, like that old song. It sounds like that, a Wendy Bagwell song. It was it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> I I mean it I was. I wasn't there that day. I don't think. Yeah, there's lots of. I had a snake fall down in front of my face in the outdoor theater we were at one time. That was fun. <laughs> it was a black snake and it was just hanging off this rafter and I went to open this barn door to sing and boom there it was. That was scary. And those are the shows you <laughs> you, you and the Christmas show you told me one time we were there. I guess it was uh, early December, snow was falling, it was beautiful. And you were telling me y'all were doing six, four or six shows, six and they were hour-long shows. Six shows a day, hour-long, you're dancing in heels, and um, we, one time we all had the flu and still had to do it, and you would be running off stage, getting sick, and coming back on and getting thrown up in the air and doing your, you know, your splits in the air, and it was, um, it was very intense. And right before um, Christmas, you would do, no, after Christmas, you'd do a 10-day stretch. No day off, six shows a day, hour-long shows. And that was death week. <laughs> now, being at Dollywood, of course, Dolly Parton, uh, tell us a, a Dolly Parton story that you met her and performed or whatever. Um, well, I did lots of benefits for her. Uh, she would have, when you have Festival of Nations, <clears throat> everybody comes and they, they kind of have a big celebration to start the thing. And so I've been in... Mardi Gras outfits and black tie outfits with Dolly. But um, I think my favorite thing is just, you know, we all got to meet her and she was very sweet and, and she gives out hugs and all of that. But I was her stand in for Festival of Nations. She goes to every single um, nation and does a little opening set with them when, when they open that week. And um, they picked me, I guess, because of my height. I don't know, because I'm fairly short. She's short. Um, to you go in and you do the part that Dolly's supposed to do. And so when she gets there, because she's such a professional, they just tell her, hey, you go here, you go here, you go here. She's like, okay, got it. But before that, the group has to rehearse. Um, and so I had to go in with Russians one time and I, I was just waiting Body in my builders. spot. Yeah, I was waiting in my spot. And the next thing I know, and I don't understand what they're saying, <coughs> um, and the production guy had left. And so next thing I know, I'm up on all their shoulders and I'm like, okay, all right. And they, boy, they had her everywhere. So I'm sure she had a great time, but um, I got to be her stand in for all the nations for quite some time. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I got to see her getting tailored for one of her outfits once while I was getting tailored for mine. So, and she talked to me for a little bit. So she's very kind and uh, you know, when Dolly's there, you can just feel her presence and you hear the click, 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 her little heels running everywhere. <laughs> Because she's tiny, she needs those heels. Now, some of the people you worked with there too. Uh, one of them has become famous, uh, mm -hmm. Carly Pierce. Y'all yeah. may know her, country singer. She worked yeah. with you in the shows. Yeah. And um, Tanya Tucker's niece, yeah, Callie, Callie Tucker. Yeah, Callie Tucker was in the first show with me. Um, but yeah, and and she's a wonderful singer. She's out in Vegas now. Um, but yeah, Carly was definitely a wonderful singer and kind of bluegrassy when she started and. Uh, we have many pictures together and we were great friends and I saw her recently uh, at the Kroger in Pigeon Forge. <laughs> so uh, she happened to be in town and it was good to see her. But you know, you never know where those roads are going to take you and I've had opportunities to go places and do things but um, I've always wanted to be a mom and I've always wanted to have four kids and I wanted to have them by the time I was 30 and that's what I did. They are... Um, like me. Yeah, well by, by Christmas time they're 11, 10, 9, and 8. So they're little stair steps. I've had a, I had a kid every year. I just got it done. <laughs> got it done, didn't you? Well, in, in living in Pigeon Forge, where the quartet convention is, you get to hang around a lot of gospel singers. You mm -hmm. know several of those guys. You've been on stage with them and got a bunch of good people, and it's good to, to see you singing with those folks as well. Yeah, um, so my, my family I'm married into, um, they have several things up in Pigeon Forge. We've got a hotel a restaurant and a dinner theater and um, Biblical Times Dinner Theater, Grand Smokies Resort Lodge and Wood Girl Buffet. And so uh, as a family we, we run all of those things <clears throat> and so for a long time um, I was the director and choreographer and performer at Biblical Times Dinner Theater and it's a big job. Um, started working with SGMA a lot and getting things done there and um, if, so, if you've been, yeah session. and if you've been to Biblical Times we did the story of Ruth um, that was the first show I got to write and then we did the story of Peter last year and they're going to be doing that again this year so if you have a chance to go to Pigeon Forge make sure you stop by and see Peter he's 
the story of Peter in Scripture is something that we can all relate to, you know, as believers. And, and we mess up, but God calls us to just keep marching on. And so it's a, it's a good encouragement. But, um, and, and yeah, and started riding with Phil Cross recently, so that's been... Well, we're going to take a commercial break here shortly, and, and when we come back, she's going to do some stuff for you. She's going to sing one, and then Guess she's going to sing I'll do a Dolly another. song. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk more about your songwriting when you come back, but right now we're going to take a short break, and we'll see you in a minute. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to The Sherry Show, and if you have missed some of what we've been talking about recently, uh, my name is Kaylee Davis, but formerly Senyard, and so my dad, Bill Senyard's here with me, which you can't see him right now, but he's over there at the table waiting on me to come back. Um, but we've been talking about how Miss Sherry is out today, and she's let us have a Senyard takeover, and so we are just reminiscing about old times. I was supposed to be her guest today, and so um, I'm kind of my dad's guest and talking about some of the things I've got a chance to do, and um, I have had a blessing of a life to be able to do a lot of things in music. Um, I've worked at Dollywood. I've been a director and choreographer and songwriter for many different things and so um, worked with Southern Gospel World and so it's been a blessing but I always come back to my roots and that is here in the beautiful mountains of North Georgia. Um, I still live in Pigeon Forge. I'm a mom of four and I love what I do every day but there's come a time where being a mom is super important, and so now I get to be at home with my babies and just enjoy. We homeschool and teach them, and it's been a wonderful thing to bring some of that music heritage back home and share that with my kids. Um, 
I recently picked up the guitar. I'm not great at it, folks, so sorry for that part of that. <laughs> um, but I'm still learning, but I wanted to, we were sort of thinking about what we could do to fill some time today. And so I wanted to sing a song from Miss Dolly Parton herself. Uh, many of you probably know this song. Uh, if you're a younger generation, you probably know it from Whitney Houston. Um, but Dolly is the originator of this song, and she wrote it for, what was his name, who she was on? Porter Wagner. See, my dad, got to have him. We talked about earlier how he's full of all this knowledge that I don't have, so that's a good thing. Um, so, but we wanted to just share a couple of songs today, and the next song I'll do a little bit later on will be for Miss Sherry herself. So we thank her for letting us come today and have a good time taking over the show. Um, but I'm going to sing a little song for you, and you may know this song that Miss Dolly Parton wrote herself. If I should stay, I would only be in your way, so I'll go, but I know I'll think of you each step of the way, and I
Okay, we're back and uh, appreciate Dwight playing for us there too. I enjoyed your song. Uh, you did a Thanks. good job over there, and uh, I wish I could do it. You know, I can sing. <coughs> I can't play very well. I can't play hardly like it. But if I could play, I couldn't play and sing at the same time. That's got to be hard. It's still something I'm learning. You know, singing and dancing together is easy, but trying to remember where chords are because I'm still new at the guitar is kind of like, you know, it's just it's it's a new challenge, and I like new challenges. I'm also learning the drums because I can't help myself. <laughs> I've had friends say they can't even play a radio; they get static. So you know. I mean, <laughs> It's, everybody's got something they can do, so find out what that is and do it. It's, it's a lot of fun. So Yeah, life is short, <coughs> and we all have gifts, and we all have passions and talents, and we have to work. Working is important, um, but there's always that saying is you find something you love, and you never work a day in your life, and yeah. I really have never worked a day in my life because I've enjoyed. It's hard work, but you don't despise it. or It's not treachery. You just love it. Well, you know, we were talking about earlier taking you kids up to Pigeon Forge a lot when y'all were younger, and mm -hmm. of course we went a lot when you started working there. And I still go up there quite a bit, but I don't know that I could live there. I, I like visiting Pigeon Forge. It's such a large, spread out town, and they got everything you want to do there. I mean, everything. They got the craziest Walmart I've ever seen. I, yes. You can't get in that place. And, the, and most of the year, from about March through Christmas or New Year's, mm -hmm. it is packed. So. Tell us about how it is living there. <laughs> well, usually there's no cell phone service half the time because the town is getting so overcrowded now. And um, so your internet's slow, your cell phone keeps dropping out. Um, but all the tourists are starting to learn our back roads now. They do. Thanks to GPS. Yeah. And so the ways that you used to be able to get around and not uh, and avoid all the people, you can't anymore. Um, if you do need a Walmart run, you do that in the week, like a Monday, Tuesday. Or the middle do, of the night. Yeah, yeah. You don't go in on the weekends. You just don't do that. So you kind of learn tricks of the trade and you learn. Um, but one of the cool things, you know, about being a local in a tourist town is a lot of places like um, you can have what's called, it's a birthday card. And uh, you can use it even though you don't have to go on your birthday, but you can use it one time during the whole year to go eat at places like the Alamo, Mama's Farmhouse. Um, so you get one free meal. All, all down the parkway just for, one for being a local once a year yeah so <coughs> I can't go eat there you know a bunch of times well. but they, they kind of like punch the little card and you get it all done yeah, okay. but you know you have about six meals throughout the year that's free so that's cool and they have local days so you can go to do things like Wonderworks for really really cheap um, they have severe county days and so you just show your ID and get to do touristy things for free some of the biggest stores I've ever been in in Pigeon Forge and Sevierville and Points North and of course, you got Gatlinburg just south of that mm -hmm. too, so it all ties together. And y'all had a big uh, fire up there a couple of years ago. In yeah, Gatlinburg. we did, and um, you know that was hard <coughs> to watch a lot of the tourist town for Gatlinburg kind of burn down. We knew so many. Um, my husband does; uh, he did have a construction company to where he would do remodels for cabins, and so a lot of our customers lost their homes that day, um, and and we were having to, to deliver that news, and that was really tough. And so, because um, you know they don't live there, they just use those for rentals but um, uh, it was definitely a devastating time and, and the whole town you know that smoke comes over the town mm -hmm. and it turns this yellowy eerie color and so um, that's something I never be safe don't play with matches <laughs> <laughs> and campfires I mean there's a lot of yeah. RV and camping up there too so <clears throat> when you are up there and you're camping be be aware of that it's, it's a wooded I mean you're in the Great Smoky Mountains mm -hmm. National Park pretty much so yeah and wind wind is what played a factor in that that day um, and you just never know and, and they were just unprecedented winds and the the fire service couldn't stop it so and certain times of the year y'all have certain events up there too like rod run or whatever quartet convention mm -hmm. and you have to know the traffic I was up there recently and I told your mother I said uh, I like to, she likes to sew so I, I like to go buy her some fabric at one of the popular stores and so I didn't want to get on the parkway and drive because that's where the store is located so I told your mother I said I'm just gonna take the back road and I did and I got in a long jam I mean yeah. it was just crazy traffic it took me an hour to get from your house which is only about four or five miles from the store it took me almost an hour to get there I don't doubt that. So I, I mean, yeah, that. you're right. They're they're noticing the back roads, and you still are. In the old days, you could take those back roads and find your way around. Yeah, not not anymore. <laughs> Thank so, you, GPS. So Pigeon Forge Living <laughs> can be it can be fun because there's everything to do, and I, we know so many people from North Georgia, whether it be Canton, Ball Ground, Ella J, Blairsville, Blue Ridge, you name it. 
that go up there to vacation and so many of them have told me they've been to see your show. Yeah, and one of the, th um, I know a lot of you know her, but one of my favorite memories before I, because this past season was my last season um, on stage for probably quite some time. And um, so I can be home with my babies. Uh, but I was in the story of Peter and Miss Selena came to visit. Selena Hales. Selena Hales yeah. came to visit me and see the show, um, her and Mr. Rick. And it was, you know, to, to do a show and to look out and see familiar faces from Jasper, um, is just always a blessing that they take the time to even come and and see me like that. It's you know and support somebody. It's it's a wonderful thing. So, but lot yeah, lots of friends and family from we well, we grew up. We went to Mount Zion um, in Jasper, and so lots of people from Mount Zion have come to see me. And so it's even from fun. Cartersville when yeah. we grew up there. I grew up there, and you did for a short period of time. A lot of those folks from the church over there have come mm -hmm. up to see you too. Yeah, Pigeon so. Forge. Everybody loves to come and go to Dollywood and Gatlinburg and. Although some people say, we're coming to Gatlinburg, and I'm like, well, actually, you're coming to Pigeon Forge, but. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of folks that just like to go up there and do other things. I mean, they have go-karting and, mm -hmm. and put, put golf, and they have. Or go for hikes. The shows, other shows up mm -hmm. down the parkway, and you know, go for a hike. Tell us about the island up there. I like going to that place. Yeah, I actually just went with a, a friend. She had come up for a weekend with her son, and um, it's, you know, you it's get to. the big Ferris wheel is. Yeah, we rode the Ferris wheel, and. Um, and it doesn't go as fast as you think. I was like, oh, but it's it's enclosed and it's heated or, or air conditioned. So if you want to do that, it's a lot of fun. And they have little rides for the kids and there's all kinds of restaurants. Paula Dean's restaurant is over there. Um, there's a place that makes cookies. I forget their name, but it is really good. And you can go in and just get a little sample cookie. They're like shortbread cookies. I like to It'll eat, spoil folks. my lunch. I like to eat. Um, so, but, and then of course they have a water fountain display there and it play, it goes to music and it has lights and stuff. Dances, so the water dances. Yeah, and there's rocking chairs to sit all around. So you can go down there for free and just walk around it's, or you can. It's a miniature version of the Bellagio in Las Vegas. Yeah, so but like there. an open outdoor way. We went so. to that, we went to Vegas last February. It's been uh, a year and a month ago. And we stood in front of the Bellagio and watched the water fountain. I mean, that yeah, stuff goes it. way, you almost break your mm -hmm. neck seeing how tall that stuff yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, the island's another place everybody likes to go. So. Well, I like coming to your house because the, her husband built her a house up there on the hill, right above Pitch and Forge. And at night, especially when the leaves are down, mm -hmm. you can see the the whole town and the Ferris wheel and all of it's just lit up and yeah, glittery. It's, it's really pretty from up yeah, there. Yeah, it's so. pretty. We're, kind, we're in the woods, so we're right off, I mean, I'm literally three minutes from the parkway if that um, but you feel like you're in the in the woods and secluded so it's nice there. So if you pop into the Biblical Times Theater or the Woodfire Grill or the hotel right next to it you may see this little gal. Yeah, may there. see me right now. Tell us today about your songwriting adventure. You've started songwriting recently. You told me that songs gospel songs were just pouring out of you and you couldn't stop it. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold Phil Cross, the great Phil Cross songwriter gospel music meets up with you. Yeah, for those of you who don't know Mr. Phil, maybe uh, you probably would know his song like Champion of Love um, or I wedding Am Redeemed. Music. Yeah, Wedding Music. Um, so Is that wedding music I hear? That one, or yeah. When I Get Carried Away. Um, and so, but I was at an event working for, uh, in Memphis for a quartet convention there and um, he just happened to walk up to me and said, what do you do? And I told him I was at Biblical Times and he just said, do you write? And I said, well, I like to, but I don't. I don't, nobody knows that. And he asked me to send him something and I was very skeptical because it's Phil Cross. Um, but I did and he called me the next day and he said he wanted to be my mentor. And so um, to be able to, you know, kind of go to someone who's already been there but also has the experience and has the heart for that and to learn, um, that's been one of the greatest treasures and blessings. And so, but I've always, I've always written things and poems and I, the other day I was at my mom and dad's and I could not sleep, so I got out photo albums and I found all these photo albums my mom had kept and I thought there were pictures in there, but no, they were poems and letters from my dad to her. Um, very, very sweet. I was down there just crying, just bawling it out. Where's the handkerchiefs right here? I know, <laughs> but it was so sweet, but I was like, ah, this is where I get it from. Um, so my dad likes to write. Um, I'm terrible at it. Well, and whether we're terrible at something or not. I'm a singer. You you just, if it's in there, you got to get it out. And right. so, um, but we, me and Mr. Phil finished our first song and um, it was a, an idea I'd had about how there's no way to count the cost that love has paid for us through Christ. And so um, we turned that in for a demo and we've been sending that out trying to see if anybody wants to pick it up. So, um, you know, and these things take time, but I'm going to keep writing and keep, and I, and I, when I wrote the story of Peter, um, I, well, God wrote that. 
uh, but you open up all four Gospels and you've got to put this man's story together in a way that people can experience it as they see it. And so um, it's just been a really amazing way to pour out just creativity and, and the passion you have, but also the thankfulness to God for what he's done. So. We're going to have a commercial break here in just a second, but tell the folks how they can reach you on Facebook if they want to oh. befriend you. Well, my name's just, my name's Kaylee Davis. You can just go on there. And, and your picture should be on there. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you'll probably see me and four kids and my husband and all well, of that. Well, since you don't so. live, actually live here full time, it's kind of hard for people to hook up with you. So that's one way you can reach her and you can kind of follow, see, follow along and see what she's up to. Anyway, let's take a commercial break. When we come back, she's going to sing one for Miss Sherry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a sweet and precious mother sitting in an old rocking chair. She is looking out that open window and on her Dear God, I'm all alone. Won't you send my children home? Won't you touch their hearts and make them understand? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family. But won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? It's a sad, heartbreaking, lonely picture of a mother just waiting to die. All alone without her children, surely God will I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family, but won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family, but won't you ask the children? Welcome back, folks. Uh, I don't know who that was playing, but I've enjoyed the guitar music this morning because obviously I got me one myself. Um, but uh, we are taking over the Miss Sherry show today, me and my dad, Bill Sinyard. Um, and if you have not been with us for throughout the rest of the program, we've just been talking about, um, I was supposed to be Miss Sherry's guest today, and so we've just been talking about my time at Dollywood and music and writing and all of those fun things. And um, and I was warning you guys earlier, I'm not that great at the guitar. All these other people are way better than me. So apologize for that. But thanks for letting me practice on you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but because we're here with, for Miss Sherry, um, it was funny. I didn't know this, Dad. Uh, I was telling Dad the song I was going to do, because I was going to do you know a country song for Dolly. And then I was going to do a, a, a hymn. And for some reason, the old rugged cross just kept coming into my mind, and my dad's like, "That's Sherry's favorite song." Yeah. So see, just that's that was meant to be. It was meant to be. So, and I'm sure if you're at home and you know this old song, feel free to sing along with me because um, it's good to worship together. So. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The them of suffering and shame. How I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last. I lay down I 
Miss Sherry. Welcome back, folks. You just about made a dear old dad cry. A big guy can cry sometimes, but you know, singing those songs makes me proud of you. Thanks, Dad. I messed up on my chords because I was getting all, my voice was cracking. It's kind of early still for singing, but. <laughs> well, it's kind of like Karen Carpenter. She could mess up the drums if she wanted to, but I ain't listening to that. I'm listening to her sing. So, you know, same with you, and I appreciate that. Speaking of singing um, and playing music and all that, this coming Monday, if uh, y'all don't forget, um, we're supposed to have the, the band legend Andy King, yeah. who y'all may know and may not know, but he's going to be here to bang on the piano a little bit. He uh, is so good. He sings with um, Carolina, the band, and um, they're sort of like Oak Ridge Boys-ish, yeah. Americana kind of thing, um, but he can play some blues and jazz and country and gospel. He's just, he's very talented. He's played all over the United States yeah, and he's beyond really good. and uh, played for, he's, he's been in with the Hoppers and mm -hmm. other groups and uh, he's played professionally at Branson and over at Myrtle Beach as far as their theaters go over there. Yeah, he so. was there for like 13 years, so he's really good. Yeah, we're we'll hopefully have him here on Monday if, he, if nothing changes. And uh, sometimes he's very busy. He called me last time. He said, uh, I got to postpone because we're having a recording session. I can't get out of it. So he, yeah. he also records. That is the house. danger of, of uh, being a musician and or touring or things like that. You just can't always plan. Well, as far, yeah, as, as far as closing out today's show, though, I wanted you to uh, kind of give the younger people and the older people, too, that may have a dream or a, a desire to perform or sing or get their talents out there, songwriting. Mm -hmm. Tell them, especially some of the places up where you live, that they can come and, and audition. Yeah, so I mean, there's theaters all over the parkway. You've got Country Tonight, Hatfield and McCoy's, the Comedy Barn, um, and of course, Biblical Times Dinner Theater, Dollywood, and so, but there's other towns like Branson, there's cruise ships, there's, um, you can also just go play in local areas, you know, where you're from, or you can serve in your church, you can uh, be at community theaters. I mean, there's all kinds of opportunities, uh, even libraries. Um, I've gone and been a part of the kids programs there you're and saying with little kids. You're supposed to go shh in a library. No, not with the kids program, um, but you can, it depends on what age groups you like and what your goal is. If you just want to write music, if you want to, you know, actually be performer. I mean, it doesn't matter, but there's all kinds of avenues to do those things and to get it done. And you don't have to, you don't have to start huge, just start small. Even if you're, some people are so afraid and they have stage fright. Um, I've never really had that issue, but I've worked with so many people who have, and they've done it for 20 years and they still get nervous. Yeah. Um, you have the jitters in your tummy because you're excited, like right. that fluttery, like I'm ready. I hope I don't mess up, but I've never just been like, Ooh, there's people. Um, but you can overcome that stuff too. You just got to go out and do it and give it a try. And, um, and then when the lights come on, it's just game on, right? Yeah, that's my favorite part. Like today, Dad was like, "We need to go ahead and go over what we're going to do." And like, I just just give me the bullet points and I'm going to wing it because that's <laughs> that's well, how I like it. You're a girl; you can talk. So yeah. <laughs> that's true. I can. Not as much as Miss Sherry. Now, Miss Sherry is the queen of talk. 
Just saying. Be nice, Dad. I'm She's just not saying. Here. I'm just saying. But uh, you told me a story <laughs> about the cruise ship business. Uh, one of your, some of your guys that you used to work with went to work on cruises. They get free room and board and food and. Listen, cruise ships are where it's at. You get to go tour. Now you have to work as part of the crew. Um, and I got offer, offered a job through Carnival one year, and I turned it down because I wanted to be back at Dollywood. Um, but you get to, they, they just pay you to be there, so all the money you're making, you're just saving it. Yeah. I mean, unless you have bills at home, obviously, that you're paying with that money. But you, you get to live on the ship, you get to eat on the ship, and as long as you're there doing your job and singing. so And they do it a little different. You have, you have like, Singer 1 um, and Singer 2. Like, you have lead singing, and then you have dancing. Most people don't always do both, but... And you also have places like Disney you could go to work at too mm -hmm. down in yeah. Orlando or yeah. even out in Los Angeles, Anaheim. And yeah, you've got all like kinds of, there's Branson. all kinds of opportunities depending on how big you want to dream. And so, you know. New York City. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to go and see a Broadway show. Broadway was what I really wanted to do, yeah. to be honest, because I just like, I like theater. Um, there's a big difference in theater versus just, you know, singing in a band versus there's all kinds of different things so well, I don't know if you pick know your, this pick your lane. <laughs> I don't know if you know this but they're getting ready to build a statue over in Cartersville for our my uncle Don Kordecki Aww. Think, speaking of theater he, he was in the Grand Theater over there for many years ran a radio program so it's kind of in our family in a way you, you yeah. get one or the entertainment. other entertainment yeah it so is. You like it entertainment, is. I guess you're going to stick with it, and uh, right now you're getting back to being a mama full time. Yes, bit, so. I got three girls and a boy and homeschooling, and um, I wouldn't have that any other way. And they're only with you for so long, those of you who are parents, you know that. That's true. Y'all grew up too fast on me, so man, I'll tell you <laughs> what. But anyway, I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing, and it was good to have you on the show today. And uh, I should be back Monday with Andy on the show, so y'all tune in for that. Miss Sherry should be back. We have a couple minutes, and You've made me sing all morning, so I thought maybe we could end by just singing a little bit of In the Garden, because it's something me and Dad sing together all the time, and I don't get to sing with my dad all the time. We got enough time for that, I guess so? Yeah, I mean, okay. I've been watching the clock. You got four minutes? <laughs> well, you and we won't sing the whole thing. We'll just do a verse and a chorus. It's fine. Okay. Okay. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me. And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has. On the spot. Well, it's what you do to your parents, kids. I Treat enjoyed right. it today, and uh, <laughs> good to have you in town. And uh, you'll be here till tomorrow, I think. So yeah, uh, I try to come back once a month or driving. so. I will, I will. But thank you, Miss Sherry, for letting us take over. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day today. Only on ETC. Yes. Only on ETC. <laughs> Goodbye.